The views, information, and opinions expressed during the following program are solely those of the individuals involved and do not necessarily represent the views of Access Communications, its representatives, or its employees. So we're at Emerald Park's car show and we're at the fire hall and I'm with Jim and Mike. And let's start with Mike. What have we got here, Mike? 1970 Javelin, big bad orange, uh, 394 speed car. And introduce me to the owner. Mr. Jim Ross, he's my neighbor. Hey Jim, uh, uh, is it good being a neighbor of his? Is he a good Oh, guy? I've known him for a long time. He, <laughs> he, used, he used to arrest me regularly. Oh, he used to arrest <laughs> <laughs> So, well, I'll just go back to him a little bit. So, you're a neighbor, and he bought this Javelin, but how did you get involved with it? What happened here? Well, it needed a little bit of work, and, and uh, Jim's got the same problem I got. Our knees don't work so good, and we're tall. <laughs> yeah. So, a little difficulty for him to get in and out of that thing, so... Uh, little sports car so we found him this 63 uh, Thunderbird which is a little oh, more user-friendly. Oh this user is the friendly. replacement car already? Yeah. yeah. Oh wow so but why a Javelin for you? Because I saw it in Manitoba when I was driving by a little gas bar and it said for sale so ah. I, I knew what it was so I had to buy it. Oh you knew what it was what yeah. is it? It's a Javelin it's a uh, but it's, it's a very there, rare, some, yeah, it's, it's very rare. What, uh, tell us a little bit about why it's rare. It's, it's an entry-level Javelin. Okay. But when the, when the, when this was ordered, it was ordered in this color, okay, which is big bad orange, yeah, with the gold package, which is a 394 speed. Ooh, and there was, out of all the javelins produced that year, eight eight of them were done like this on this line. Okay, so and it's this is one of three that is known to exist today. Okay, so okay. There may be others, but nobody knows about them. So, Mike, what 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 did you do in this car? It's got a four speed. What kind of tranny is in there? Uh, Borg Warner transmission, I believe, and okay. uh, that's an AMC 390. So I basically just cleaned it up, got it running nice, did some repairs in the car, and needed a little clean up, and and uh, here we are today. Yeah, you know when um, this is an American Motors product, yes, isn't it? it is, yeah. So they were they were trying to enter the the muscle car thing yes. and do all that sort of stuff. So this became their sort of flagship car a little. Yeah, bit, they it? It, it was, but they, they they were really racing model. They called it an AM, AMX. Okay. No okay. back seat. Yeah. Oh, no back seat. Yeah. Oh, wow. But other, other than that, the same, the same car. Just no Was this back thing seat. trying to turn the quarter mile in? Like, uh... Well, these, these were, from what I've read, were faster than the 66 Mustangs at the time. Ooh. <laughs> There's I know a what... Ford guy over there. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of horsepower, you know. Over what three... do you think it's putting out? Oh, about 320. Oh, that's not bad for a little 400 little and some set. feet of torque. Yeah, with a four-speed, a light little car. And the AMX cars were two-seaters, so they're lighter yet. Those are the ones that went like they scooted well. Yeah. And uh, they were a fast production car. They were uh, quite sought after by collectors. And you just don't see Javelins anymore. Uh, hard to get parts for them. Um, replacement pieces, mechanical parts well, you can. Well, who's keeping the Javelin parts for everybody? Like, you know, you gotta, you gotta make some phone calls and know some people to get uh, things done, so. so. there's no central warehouse anywhere that. Uh, no, even, even paint for the engine was an exercise in futility to try to find the right paint. I found some in Edmonton, had to buy a case of it in order to get a can of paint. 
<laughs> that's, what it, that's what it takes when you're dealing with things that so are whereabouts out of the ordinary. Did you found this in Manitoba at yeah. a truck stop, a car stop? No, yeah, just a, at a little uh, resort area called Ninette, Manitoba. Okay. So nice. It's south of Brandon, and uh, my sister has a trailer out there, so I was out there for a holiday at, with town, and I saw that, and I bought it. So let's just look over here. Did you buy this afterwards? Yep. Oh, what happened here, Mike? Well, Jim told me he knew where there's a T-Bird for sale, and I had suggested that he buy a Thunderbird because it's a bigger car for cruising, easier for him to get in and out of because that black one's mine. I have one also, oh. and uh, <laughs> this was a pretty nice car. Didn't need a whole lot of work, so Jim bought it, and he's got himself a real nice 63 Cruiser. Open her up, Jim. Let's have a look. I love the interiors <coughs> of these. Uh, are you okay to do Why that? Yeah. 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 I love, you know, Thunderbird spent a lot of time this doesn't have the turning wheel, does it? Oh, yeah, look at that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh. Just that whole Thunderbird dash and everything. Yeah, yeah. One of, one of my favorites is in the late 50s, and everybody likes the mid-50s Thunderbirds, but this, this styling here, they just kept it. I don't know what happened to Ford after Thunderbird. I mean, they've got a great brand, and I don't know. <laughs> they made some nice cars up till about 1971, and after that, yeah, uh, like you know the Torinos and the Mustangs, and not much after that, except for half times. But this but, is a great brand. Look oh, at this car. I know it's classy as heck. Yeah, I mean they yeah. could still make a Thunderbird, couldn't they? <laughs> well, you know I don't know. They came back with a retro one in what the nineties oh, or uh, 2000? in two thousand and one, two, three, and four. Yeah, and I had one of those too. And they were a fun little car, but again, it lowered the ground and kind of scrunchy to get into. Not good for us old crippled guys. <laughs> so what have you got in there for an engine, do you know? 390. 390. 394 barrel. Three speed. Uh, Three speed automatic. So who had this car? Actually, uh, the car was originally done where? Uh, Moose Jaw? Not Moose Jaw. Uh, an old gentleman in Indian Head put a pile of money in it and restored it. Okay. And uh, he ended up selling it eventually. It, time moves on. I think his nephew in Fort Coppell bought it. I believe that's the story. And then he sold it to a contractor in Emerald Park, and it sat for a couple more years because he never drove it. And uh, it needed a couple of repairs. And then Jim heard about it for locally here, and we went and looked at it this fall. And we it went, huh? We went. It's mine now. So. <laughs> well, you chose well, and you're a big fella, so a car like this, you'll be able to get into it a lot easier. Just barely, but I can't get in and drive <laughs> just it. Just barely. Well, it's just they weren't made for people like me, but yeah. I, I can manage. So what has it got in it again for an 390. engine? 390. 390, okay, yep. good old 390. Three-speed yep. uh, automatic. Yep. Air or anything like that? No, no air, unfortunately. You know, I love the configuration of the dash cluster of the instruments. They're just, they just, I don't know what it is. It evokes that airplane kind of thing, doesn't it? Yeah, They're well, still playing those are replacement that. gauges. It's oh, been modified they? a little. Yeah, the original okay. gauges were in the same position, but they were, these have replaced them. These are... Uh, more of a modern gauge, but they did it well. It, it complements the car. It does. So what's the color? Do you know what the color is? Teal. Okay. I call that teal. Very good. Well, Thunderbird's always been a winner in my book, so good for you guys. Yeah. And it's got the nice Thunderbird mats and... Oh, does it? Oh, yeah. Oh, look at that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There they are. Yeah. You could chase around forever trying to find the stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, these cars are 60 years old, so you got to do a little looking for pieces and parts, but... You look around this parking lot, there's a lot of old iron here, and these guys know how to fix them and keep them running. That's what it's all about. Absolutely. Well, thanks, guys. Appreciate yep. it. Thank yeah. you very much. Thank, Thank you. Interest. Thank you. Hey, we're here with Rick Linius, and he's got a 1928 Ford Chevy. Chevy. Look at that. I didn't even get it right. So it's a Chevy, uh, what was it originally? Chevy Coupe. Chevy Coupe. So where did you find your car, Rick? It was my dad's car. Oh, it was... Really? It was my dad's like... very first car. Your dad what? My dad's very first car. No. This car, yeah. This was your dad's very first car? Like yeah. from 1928 or uh, somewhere? Oh, well, he bought it afterwards, yeah? Yeah. So where, whereabouts are you guys from? The, Down by Assiniboia. Down by Assiniboia. So how long did your dad have this car? Oh, he uh, had it, oh, I don't know, a number of years. And then he uh, parked it in the... In the bush, and he went. As and bought all a, guys did, yeah. yeah he went and bought a, bought a outdoor truck. parking. And he went and bought a Fargo truck. He went and bought a Fargo truck. Yeah. So and what did this Chevy, when it was original, have in it? A little four-cylinder, a little uh, 
a gear shift. And it was a hard top, wasn't it, converted? Yeah, it, the cows were taking it out to the pasture like that. Dad did. Oh, you go out to the pasture with? Well, he got tired of it being in the yard. Okay. So he drug it out into the pasture. Okay. And it sat there for five, six years. And the cows rubbed against this. This is all wood in, underneath there. Oh, that wood under here, okay. Yeah. They rubbed it and it fell apart. This is what was left. Pretty good, actually. <laughs> Pretty good. So what, what did you do? Everything that we see? Yeah, everything. There was nothing I hired out. That's pretty cool. So what have you put in there for an engine? It's a 307 out of a 69 Chevelle. 69 Chevelle. Oh, you went and picked a good year, too. <laughs> so what was your vision when you started the car? I'm going to make oh. it into a hot rod? Well, that was sort of the vision. We, a bunch of us down there go hunting gophers. And What's that? Go hunting gophers and stuff like this, and this car was good. Because oh. I had narrow wheels. And... Oh, you, you <laughs> used this as a gopher hunter? Oh, yeah, we used it for everything. Oh, so when your dad put it out in the field, you restored it enough to after, run it. Yeah, after I got of age, and I drug it back in and we Got it running. Got it running, the way we went. It was a gopher chaser in your Saturday night car. Pretty well, it was not too much Saturday night because we didn't trust the thing whether it was going to leave us <laughs> in the middle. Because by then, we had retrofitted another motor in and oh, okay. all that stuff. Right? So when did you do this big conversion to a hot rod? When did that happen? 1978, I started. You started, wow. So the first thing, you, what did you do with it? The first thing, you just took the body off the frame kind of thing? And then... No, I just took the, uh, we got a straight axle and put a different rear end in it, put a different motor in it, welded the motor mounts so they fit and all that stuff. And, Radiator cowl is the same. Okay. You put that up to a to a radiator, and that was it. Started up, and we had the battery sitting back here, and the gas tank was sitting over here. We started up and uh, driving around to it, run out of gas. And <laughs> but you've done some. You've kind of turned it into a custom now, though. I mean, they, you've gone the distance. Huh? Oh yeah. My mother. God rest her soul, we wanted to, the town was having its 75th, I think, anniversary. She was 75 in this car. Okay. We're all the same age group. Oh, they were both in the same area, yeah, yeah. okay. So she wanted to know if I, she could drive this car, so I took it home, went down and got it, and, and drug it back to Regina here and started working on it. But mom didn't make it that long, she passed away. But Oh, okay. But I got it done for that date. Oh, you got it done for the day, did you? Yeah. Was was this the final version of when you got it done? Pretty well, yeah. Pretty well. Where are the seats out of? Where do you get those seats? These seats from? These seats? Just uh, auto wrecker, set of bucket seats. Yeah, and you did all my the wife, custom upholstery and all wife, that stuff. My wife did that. She sold, she sold the seats. Oh, your wife sold the seats? <laughs> yeah. Beautiful job. Did it come with these running boards on it? Yeah. Yeah, they come with running boards except... From the crack there to the back, it used to have rubber. Mm -hmm. well, you've probably seen it on that one there. They're oh, all the done, same. You've done a great job. What, what's the color of the car? Plum Crazy. Plum Crazy. <laughs> 1970 ch uh, Challenger color. Yeah, Dodge color. They had a lot of those nice colors. Beautiful. Yeah. And is, is this the original window out of it? Uh, no. The frame or anything? No, mm -hmm. that's pretty no, much this all is. custom. The post is, yeah. Post is. But this here is... The window came up over here sometimes. Oh, yeah, it was taller. Yeah, that's right. Well, you did a great job on it. And, uh, yeah, it's kind of an ode to your mother. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks a lot. We appreciate it. Yeah, I'll give it to my grandson. He wants it. Lucky kid. <laughs> Take care. Bye now.
So we're here with Brenda Herring, and this is her car. Well, actually, you say it's your husband's car. It's my husband's car, Ray Miller. Ray Miller, yes. okay. So what have we got here, Brenda? This is a 48 Fleet Line. Gee, that's a beautiful car. Yes. Where did he find this car? We drove to Strathford, Ontario, and picked it up. Really? Yeah, and the fellow who had it had a body shop. And uh, this was sort of his flag car. He had it on all his advertisements. And it was his since he was about 16. He had it for like 19 years. Wow. And uh, decided to put his energies into a sailboat instead. So uh, we took, brought her home. How did and, you get it home? You didn't drive so we it. We trailered it home. Oh, you trailered we it. Trailer. Yeah, no, there was no interior done at all. It was oh, you're, nothing. You guys did the interior. He did it? the interior and a lot of mechanical and electric. The all electrical had to be done as well. Wow. So yes, he did a lot of work. It took him three years. Look at the chrome on this thing. What's the model again? You said it's a fleet. Forty-eight Fleet Line. Fleet Line. Fleet Line. Yes. You know, this is a Chevy. Yes. Right. You know, I just love it with the way they they design that. These models after, just came out after the war. They started putting more and more into cars. Uh -huh. And just check out the, the interior. That dash is just gorgeous. Yes. Oh. Well, and we laugh at the back. It's just like a couch. And of course, with the blinds and everything in the back seat. One surprise for us on our way out here. Of course, we had all the windows down. Yes. He hasn't got the air conditioner hooked up yet. Oh, was there an air conditioner? He with put it? one in. Yeah. Oh, we nice. always because we don't like the heat. But anyway, with all the windows open and with the, the vents open, it was very comfortable. And there's no wind noise. Oh. Well, so car, they probably designed cars in those days to be like that they, because I think there was so. very little air conditioning in cars. Yes. Oh yeah. my God. So we enjoy gorgeous. that. Let's have a look here. Did your husband do any work on the engine in here? Uh, a little bit. Yes, he did. Looks yeah. like he chromed it up a little bit. No, he didn't chrome it up. But he, the fellow who worked on it, had done that, I think. Oh my gosh, yeah. it's just gorgeous. He, You've got the original Chevy hubcaps and the yes. beauty rims on it. Yeah, that's Is it nice to right. drive? Very nice and very comfortable. Just oh, kind of, kind of it flow. floats. <laughs> so, do you get to many car shows? <laughs> well, we just took her out this year. It's it's our first this year with her. This is an inaugural run. Kind yeah, well, this is our th second run, second car show with her. Oh yeah. man, yeah. I love these these kind of tear, uh, these sort of eyelids over top or eyebrows over top of the lights. Yeah, are. yeah, yeah. Ray Ray had fun decorating her up a little. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, and the and the sun visor here too. This is a very common thing in some of those cars. Mm -hmm. Hard and to find though when you when you haven't got one and you're looking to put one on. I there. suppose it it again came with the car, and we also had to put in. Of course, you probably know about that because when you pull up to a stoplight, you can't see the lights because of the hood. Oh. So there's that little thing on the dash that reflects the light. Oh really? Yes. Oh, you can't see the. Oh. No, you can't. Yeah. Oh, so there's sort of a little device that shows you what the mm -hmm. light is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, it's this round thing. Right Let's have a look at that. Right beside the tack. Right. Oh, right beside you see the it? tack. It looks like a little mirror in it. Yeah. Oh, okay. So that's how you can tell if there's a red yes. light or a green light. Yes. <laughs> You know what? I'd feel pretty cool driving around a car like this. Oh, Amazing. We enjoy it. We certainly do. Well, that's nice when the wife can enjoy the husband's hobby. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it's kind of a hobby for both of you, I'm sure, a little well, bit. Well, I guess it is, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I sacrifice giving him up for all those hours. You ah, see. there you go. Who's that little character in the back? Oh, that is uh, Jeff Dunham's puppet. Jeff Dunham? Walter. Oh, you don't you don't know Jeff Dunham? No, I don't. Mm, he's a he's a ventriloquist oh. from the states. And, and why is that special to you? Well, because he he makes us smile. He's he's grumpy, and uh, yeah, we just. Oh, when you feel a little bit tough, you just look we, at him. We and look you at smile. him. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and a lot of people recognize him when they come and they look at the car. And oh, oh, there's okay. Walter. So okay, thanks for joining us in Cusion on Seven. You're Wonderful welcome. Car. Wonderful car. So we're here with Nancy Frum. She's got a, is it a 58 or 59? A 1958 Pontiac Parisienne. You know, and somebody came over here, Wayne told me, uh, he's been a lot of car shows, that this is, he's never seen one like this. And I don't think I've actually seen a 58 Pontiac. I've seen Chevys, but not a Pontiac. They're, they are unusual. Um, this is the Canadian model of Parisienne. Oh. And they're actually kind of built on a Chevy frame, which is nice for us because if we need any interior parts or anything, you just buy Chevy because you can't buy Pontiac. Okay. The U.S. Pontiacs are wider, long, longer. They're, too, they're, they're different. Yeah, yeah, they are. They, they are, are different. Even the chrome pieces don't fit. They look exactly the same. Isn't that something? But nothing fits. So, Isn't that and something? this belongs to myself and my husband, Harvey. Okay. Where did you find your car? Oh, we bought it 
40, 50 years ago, somewhere up north. I can't even remember really? where. Really? We've had it that long. We have, but we have only started fixing it up in the last five or seven years. Because I was going to say, I've never yeah. seen it at a car show. No, no. It's just now to the point where we can take it to car shows. We don't even have a, a top on it yet. Okay. That's, so we oh, just you're put still working the, on here. So yeah. what did you do here for your... In oh, oh you, have, you have the top. Yeah. What did you do here with your interior? The interior is, uh, I believe the seats, the front seats are out of a Lexus. The back seat is, is an original Chevy product anyways, but we took them down to the States and had them recovered by a place called uh, Charlie's Garage, okay. which does really nice jobs of yeah, interior. Where is he located? He's located in Mesa, downtown oh, Mesa. Oh, he's downtown? You were down yep. in Arizona? Yeah, we were down in Arizona. Yeah. This is a standard car too. Uh, no, actually, it's it's uh, it's it's automatic. Oh, it's okay. just on the floor. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> so I see. It that looks like a standard shift. It does. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. this is the whole Pontiac treatment of a dash kind of thing. So it's yes. different than the Chevy, then too. Oh, very very different. Yeah. Do you know what the engine's in it? Do you know what you? Yeah, have? 348. Well, you guys must be very proud of this car here. Holy smokes! Oh, yeah. Red is an eye popper too. So this is the Pontiac treatment on the sidebar and everything. It's just this is this is Parisian. Yeah, uh, Laurentian doesn't have the bullet. Yeah, no, it doesn't. Thing, but the Parisian. So has do you enjoy this. driving it? I have not driven it yet. It's manual steering. I'm not even sure I could go around a corner. But do you enjoy driving in it though? Oh, I love driving it. Absolutely. <laughs> this is my favorite car of all time. Oh. which is one of the reasons why we bought it in the first place. Yeah, yeah you, you picked a really good one. Oh, it's so a nice rare. car. So rare, Pontiac yeah. convertible, 58. Yeah. Well, congratulations. Oh, well, thank you very much. Thank you for joining us. Appreciate it. So we're here with Leonard Pitroff, and he's got a 1981 yeah. Pontiac. What do we call this again? It's a turbocharged. Turbo Trans Am. Yeah. Turbo Trans Am, yeah, yeah, okay. So I thought it was a Smokey and the Bandit, but you say it's not quite, then. It, it's a little different model? Yeah, well, the Smokey and the Bandit had, uh, it was a gold trim, right? And it was a hardtop too, wasn't it? And it was a hardtop, yeah. Yes. So uh, you guys, like you notice, it's a, it's a uh, convertible, so. Um, which is nice, because we haven't interviewed anybody with one of these. Yeah, yeah, so between 78 and 81, um, if you had money in your pocket, you could pay about seven to nine thousand dollars and get a factory authorized conversion. Wow! So, oh, on top of it, or, or yeah. 7, so you buy this thing, you take it into Majestic Coach, and I think they were in Ohio or something like that. Yeah, yeah. And uh, they would do that for they would seven. They would do thousand. this. Oh. So this particular car, um, a doctor owned it. Okay. And it lived most of its life in Florida, right? Oh, is that where you got it? Uh, no, actually, the guy that I bought it from got it from Florida. Okay. He was in Winnipeg. Okay. Yeah. And um, so um, they kind of lost track of them, but there's probably only about 500 that were made. Oh, really? Total, yeah. So, so this was a conversion done by that company you talked Majestic about? Majestic Coach, yeah. Majestic Coach. As far as I know it was, yeah. So when they bought the original car, it's a two-door hardtop, and uh, it's, it's a Trans Am. Right. And then they take it over to Majestic Coach, and for some good dough, they'd make it into a conversion. That's right. And where yeah. did you find the car? I found it in Winnipeg. Okay. Yeah, the guy put it on, um, I think it was Kijiji. Okay. And, and why a Trans Am for you? Oh, I had a Trans Am when I was a kid. <laughs> yeah. I had a 77 when I was a kid, so that's when I fell in love with them, right? So, oh, yeah. yeah. That's always the story, isn't it? A guy's got... Yeah. So oh, was man, it a if 400 I had... turbo in there? Or no, it? no, this is a, a 301. It's called the LU8. Oh, LU8. Yeah, okay. this is after the after all these uh, companies got uh, restricted with their horsepower, right? Oh, this is one so, of the... Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's probably 220 so, horse or something like that or whatever. Uh, yeah, barely. Barely? <laughs> yeah, it doesn't kick out a lot of horsepower. But it's a beautiful um, car to drive, and it's but, uh, uh, midnight black, is yeah, it? Is so that the color we got on here? Or? I'm not sure. I'm trying to look at it and see what black. it is. It doesn't but, look like a jet black. It looks like it has a little bit of... Yeah, as far as I know, it's been repainted once, and it's it's original colors, right? Because I'm, I'm all about stock. I love stock, so... And this 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 interior is stock? Is that the I way believe so, yeah. Yeah. Cloth Yeah, because my 77 had exactly the same interior. Jeez. So, but... Uh, it needs a little bit of touch-up and stuff. Oh, right you've there. done a great job with this. Yeah, you know what? It's here, and it's alive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you go in it. Yeah, so, yeah, it's cool. It's cool to have. Very good. So, okay, well, thanks for joining us on Cruising. Yeah, thank you. Thank you.
you'd like to share your feedback on the program you just watched, contact us today. 